Hi, so uh, I thought we'd have a little little fun today with uh, fast SSS. People seem to like subsurface scattering, so um, I'm going to go over some V-Ray SSS with you. Uh, I've had some requests in the past to uh, be a little more detailed in the construction of my scene, so I'm just going to build the scene straight out here. Um, let's set up workspace and uh, let's create a cube. This is, we're going to do two scenes for subsurface scattering, one complex and then one, this one is going to be very simple to go over the basics. Um, we've got a one centimeter cube that we're creating. So there we go. Now note that it's, it's important that you know the scale of your objects to work with subsurface scattering properly. So knowing that this is a one centimeter cube and our grid can show that. Um, is important. So let's create a light. Um, when I create spotlights in V-Ray, I tend to make sure that they already have cast shadows on, so I don't have to remember that. So I use the options. I set my decay rate automatically to quadratic. And uh, we might set this a little larger, though. Set that to a 60 cone angle and create. Now let's point that downward. Uh, negative 90, pull it up. So now we've got a very simple test scene. Now this scene is intended to show exactly how far light is going to filter through our cube from top down. So let's create a fast SSS material. So there we go. So some of the first things to note about fast SSS is uh, these, this preset. These presets are very valuable for building things close to what they say. If you're building skin, I would highly advise you start with one of these three skin presets. Um, so let's do that. We'll do a quick skin pink. And uh, the pre-pass rate is going to determine the quality. I'll let this, the, uh, negative one means it's undersampling. So for every pixel in the scene, it's not sampling light at uh, that number of pixels, so it's under sampling your scene and should be pretty poor quality. We'll see that in a minute. Um, these other presets, we're going to let them ride. One thing to note is that this is a one centimeter scatter radius. So the, the radius of light scattering through the scene uh, will be one centimeter in depth. The phase function we'll talk about a little later, but we can leave that where it is right now. So let's do a quick test render. Um, let's set our globals first. Uh, obviously we're in Maya software. Let's switch to V-Ray. Under presets, I have saved a linear workflow V-Ray frame buffer preset uh, that's based on the Niederhorst settings from my earlier video, so I advise you to save a preset for yourself. I'm going to set this to Gaussian and uh, up the threshold number so our renders go a little faster. I don't mind a little noise. And uh, let's just hide under here. There's a option to hide render view when we're rendering, so we don't have to see that pop up every time. Uh, so let's give it a try. Render this viewport. Uh, one thing to remember is we should be viewing sRGB. Oh, also you want to apply the material to your object, so let's do that can't tell you how many times I forget to do that. So now you'll notice there's a pre-pass and then a final render pass. And you can see that light is generally scattering about one centimeter. My light is really, really bright, so let's, uh, let's bring that down a bit. Re-render. And you, you can tell that, and remember again, sRGB is to uh, compensate, right? Without sRGB, we're looking at a linear image directly and uh, it, that is not a proper way to view an image on, an, on a 2.2 uh, gamma monitor so the sRGB is there to compensate for that and show us what the final image should look like. So uh, you can see that light is scattering about one centimeter through this material. Let's uh, double check that. We'll set this to a 0.5 and let's re-render that. And it's scattering about halfway through the material. 
Um, you can see that there's quality issues here. These little uh, artifacts are, uh, they're, they're essentially the pre-pass rate. So because we've undersampled our pre-pass for the uh, subsurface scattering, we're getting artifacts. So if we turn this to zero, we'll get um, a slightly better quality. Still not perfect. You can still see a little bit of artifact. So I often use about a pre-pass rate of one, one to one um, render quality. You can see it takes a little longer for the pre-pass, but much cleaner um, results. So that about shows you what I'm talking about, that how, how far light will filter based on your scatter radius. And of course, be aware of the scale of your scene. So let's move on to something a little more complex. All right, so for this next part, we're going to use that same uh, infinite realities head, and we're gonna do some proper skin shading on a realistic head. Um, I'm gonna wing it here too. I'm gonna start it from scratch so you guys see every detail. And uh, also know that um, you know quality of render is very dependent on the quality of your models and textures and materials. So it helps that that uh, Infinite Realities has provided this awesome asset so uh, people can play around with subsurface scattering the way we do. So let's uh, go and import an OBJ, and we've got the Infinite Level O2. Now you can see that I'm in centimeters by default and this head comes in very small. Um, so our scale is definitely not right. So let's, uh, to fix that, we should, we should convert or scale his head up. So uh, let's create uh, a guide. This cube, let's say, uh, well my, my head is about nine inches tall. Uh, yes, I did measure it at some point. Um, so let's convert nine inches to centimeters. Nine inches, nine times 2.54 is the conversion. So 22.86. So let's just make it 23 inches. So 23 inch or 23 centimeters rather. Um, so let's scale the head up. Now that measurement is based on from from top of head to chin, so let's uh, scale it at that. So that's approximate, doesn't have to be exact, but that gives us the basic idea or basic scale. We may want to shrink him down a little bit. All right, so we don't need the guide cube anymore. And there we go, properly scaled. Let's uh, freeze his transforms. So there he is. Because I hate things being bisected by the grid, I'm just gonna move them up. Uh, another thing, we'll just do a normal smooth, uh, normal soften edge so that we don't see him faceted. All right, so let's get a material set up. We'll start with a V-Ray SSS, Fast SSS 2. We're going to set this to a skin pink. And let's uh, start working on textures. So I'm going to bring in a file. Uh, I think we're going to just stick with normals because uh, normal maps will render faster than the true displacement. And we'll get close. Um, if I were doing production, I'd probably use real displacements. But this should look pretty good. So let's take a look at what this file is. I always turn quadratic off because sometimes uh, quadratic filtering can mess up a texture um, in the distance. So um, scenes, I have this stored in infinite, scan version one. Um, we'll use tangent space, tangent space, normal maps, smooth UV. That'll be his bump map. So we're done with that. Well, let's plug it into the bump and set our bump amount. It's ne you know, bump amount at one is almost always too high. So let's go down to something like 0.4. That's still probably too high, but let's give it a try. And the map type, this is a normal bump map. We're using or a 
a this is based on height fields or a black and white luminance map we're using a normal map in tangent space so let's select that in the drop down that's important so now we've got our bump map set up we should apply this material <clears throat> and uh, let's get our diffuse map set up again quadratic off let's grab our color map um, the color jpeg now let's uh, take a quick look at the texture maps um, I have modified them slightly from what was provided by infinite reality so you should be aware of that um, take a look at this we see our normal maps which is un unmodified this is the color main diffuse color map I've created a subsurface scatter map that is slightly blurrier and more uh, saturated. There is a the overall color map. This is telling the subsurface map where where it should have subsurface effects, where it's white and where it's black. There should be no subsurface. So hair. Um, these were created just by um, using color curves on the existing color map that was provided. So I sort of extracted out the hair bits and uh, the eyebrows and stuff where I don't want as much subsurface scatter. Uh, there's also a specular map that is also derived from the color map uh, but with some hand painted areas where the lips need to be completely specular. There won't be any specular where the hair is. Th that's not technically right but for our, our testing here it's it'll work just fine. And uh, likewise with this subsurface scatter, this is usually considered an epidermal map uh, from Mental Ray. Okay, so this basic diffuse color map we will hook into the diffuse texture. Let's bring in another file and we'll use, let's look at our large icons, we'll use our SSS map and we'll hook that into our subsurface color so let's take a look at the material we've got over uh, we'll, we'll hook up the over overall color in a sec but we've got uh, our subsurface color is here that's hooked up there our diffuse color is hooked up there but currently our diffuse amount is zero um, so we'll we'll check out what that does in a little bit. The scatter radius is set to one centimeter, which is a decent approximation to start with. And let's create one more texture. This will be the overall color. And that overall color will plug in right into there. And that's just going to tell it where not to do subsurface scatter and where to. You can also use overall color to tint the overall result, making something more or less satur or more saturated, or or uh, have an entirely different tint entirely, or use it as a dust covering over the object. All sorts of uses for it, but we're going to use it just to tell the eyebrows not to not to go, or not to subsurface scatter. Um, now you can see the model doesn't have that detail yet. Um, well, actually, that's part of the normal map, so. Uh, it should be just fine. Let's make sure we apply it to the object and now we need to create some lights. <clears throat> 